All right, we are back. A difficult game about climbing, making progress. You know, I just checked my, my friends list. Chibli has um, 12 hours in this. Dan has 115 hours in this. Now, at least 80% of that <laughs> has to be because I'm pretty sure when he leaves his stream, he leaves whatever he was playing at the end of his stream on, which is crazy. <laughs> it's the only thing that makes sense. I, at least on weekends. Oftentimes, I will like talk to Dan on Discord on the weekend, and his status says that he is playing whatever the last played game he streamed on Friday was. He does? That's how his Balatro save got wiped. Oh, man. Woo! Huge. Look at that. He's always on some emulator too. Actually, if he doesn't have a PC game open, uh, it does say that he's playing like RP CS3 literally 100% of the time. Which is scary to me because I think that he used that to play Demon Souls before Demon Souls came out for the PS5. Oh, for NCAA. Okay, so he hasn't had his computer on for four years. That's good. <laughs> Don't worry, his PC turns off once a week on stream. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, it's, if you're not watching, you should watch, man. It's some good stuff. Nothing hits like like sea shanty, sea shanty two RuneScape overclocked remix. Huge. Oh, there's <laughs> one way to die. Would you rather have itchy, freezing, or sweating balls? Absolutely sweating balls. None of them ideal, of course. Freezing seems actively, like, bad for your health. I don't want any of my body parts to get frozen. Itchy is more annoying than sweaty, even though, like, one tends to come with the other. I got a good one for you. Would you rather have no knees or no elbows? No knees. Both would be worse than what I presently have. If anything, it'd be kind of sick to have like eight elbows. Can you imagine how fucked up you would get with your arm, bro? Can you imagine how torqued up a karate chop would be from a dude with eight elbows? Shit would cut you in half. <laughs> like a scorpion's tail, like unwinding into the karate chop. Holy. Or is it... Or you could scratch your back, so true. Mm. Oh man, that would be sick. Oh. Trebuchet outside. Oh man. 
You see all the people making tweets about the theater audiences during uh, End of Evangelion being the least well-behaved movie audience has ever existed in human history? Yes, I have. Anime fans, what are you doing? You got a chance for some... Redemption? Maybe, if that is that the word? Cute. Ooh. They're giving us a bad name? I believe that. One thing I can't stand, uh, and this showed up in the Twitter thread, was someone who talks at the end of the movie. Someone said they went to see Evangelion. Or the end of Evangelion. And at the end of the movie, someone said, Well, that just happens. No thank you. That's the worst. They should be sent to prison. Not for talking, but for thinking that what they said needed to be heard. I didn't see that one, but I did see a clip of a movie theater cheering at the masturbation scene. Okay, all I'm saying is it better not be any of the same motherfuckers who when I was like, I think it's kind of funny that the high school boys are getting dressed up in tuxedos to go see Minions. People were like, NL, I don't know if you've ever heard of doing this job called service work, but I've also heard stories of those boys in tuxedos throwing popcorn at the screen and somebody has to clean that up at the end of the day. As long as it's none of the same fuck- Oh, it's- I'm being told it's all the same fuckers? Yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> Anybody here work in a movie theater? Who's a worse audience? <laughs> Dude! We gotta have like a, a podcast with someone who works in a movie theater. I want to know who the absolute, consistently worst audience is to validate my preconceived notions about society. Kids? Yeah, but kids don't like typically go see movies by themselves. Teens, I could totally see being an uh, overrepresented demographic for uncleanliness, loudness, and other debauchery, for sure. The guy J-O-ing and falling asleep. I saw that. I love that post. Um, I will say, you go to see movies long enough, you will, you'll definitely have like a pervert experience. Kate and I saw, and I'm, I mean, I'm sure someone's probably nutted in almost every movie theater I've ever been in, but... Um, we saw Jojo Rabbit in the theater. So it must have been like five years ago. And like at the end of the movie, like, like the whole movie, like two rows behind us, there was just like a middle-aged man dressed like way, way, way too warm for the weather. And we would hear him be like, You know, it just like every 15 minutes or something, you'd hear something crazy. And then like when the end credits started to roll, I did hear a zipper. And then, I don't know, things were just not smelling good. And I was like, I don't think, you know, Dwight Eisenhower showing up in the post credit scene. I think we should just get out of here. That was at the um, inner, no. <laughs> that was at the International Village um, Theater in Chinatown in Vancouver. So you already are, you're getting some interest, interesting sort of mixes of clientele in there to begin with. Oh no, you're right. I have to do the beam again. <laughs> Yep. 
But like, I, I know this flies in the face of what I'm, what I literally just said, but at the same time, I'm like, people fucking hate movie theaters, man. And I'm like, I, I've had a few, f like, cooked experiences at the multiplex. I've seen like probably 200 movies in the, I don't even know, it might even be like 500 movies in the theater. You do anything 500 times, you're gonna have like a couple of stories about it. I love going to the movies when I get a chance. It's rare these days, but still. Oh. Like if, if the convenience of it wasn't uh, an object for me, how often would I go to the multiplex? Honestly, versus other possible entertainment options, I would go once a week. Now, would I see one new movie a week? Probably not. But I would see like two new movies a month and then maybe there would be like a cool art house movie playing and then maybe I could go see like a classic movie. There's no good movies out though. Mm, I'm easily entertained, still difference. It's a evolutionary adaptation. I love the anime fans policing other anime fans. Oh, of course the bad actor at the end of Evangelium was wearing a Darling in the Franks hoodie. Yeah, that makes sense. You know society sees you as his brother, right? Whether you're a in the Darling in the Franks, Gurren Lagann, Death Note, My Hero Academia. <laughs> It's all Pokemon to the normal person, okay? Don't lump Death Note in there. You're so far away still from understanding this simple truth. <laughs> gonna drive to Bellingham tomorrow night uh, make, make a case for me what's going on in Bellingham tomorrow night are they getting their first escalator no not yet okay <laughs> yeah. I don't get it but plus two the the it's not a joke the the reference is that the town does not have an escalator. Because, you know, I'm, I'm like a, kind of like a modern-day Marco Polo. When I eat things or go places, I like to look up, um, you know, what I'm eating or where I am on uh, Wikipedia. So I can avail myself of the lore of the world. Maybe this time, no, this time I was definitely on Reddit. I went to r slash Bellingham to see if there was anything going on. And the top post that week was like, just curious, are there any escalators in this city? I can't think of any. And then the top reply was like, there used to be one in the big department store, but ever since it got closed down, I don't think so. This 97-year-old town still makes people change planes the old-fashioned way. Oh, come on. Overcooked. <laughs>
Why is the color green evil? You need to call a gas fitter to your home right now. There are harmful solvents leaking into the breathable air. Oh. You ever see... Wait, wait, I need your help on this one, librarian. This is even less specific than usual. You ever see the threads on, like, the home security subreddit? Where people are slowly discovering that they actually have, like, paranoid delusions? And not, uh, home security questions? Like, people will make posts... Yeah, my landlord keeps leaving me notes, um... Someone keeps stealing my packages and then erasing my uh, CCTV footage. <laughs> it's not funny, I guess, but everybody in the comments is like, you need to go see like a psychiatrist immediately. And they're like, well, how are they going to solve my problem? And you're like, brother! Carbon monoxide moment. <clears throat> That's all I got. You ever checked out the gang stalking subreddit? No, um, I don't know that much about gang stalking to begin with. But like, if you were concerned that you were a victim of gang stalking wouldn't you not want to go to r slash gang stalking because wouldn't like they find you there you're using too much logic okay never mind <laughs> my mistake What is gang stalking? This jump used to be so easy. Gang stalking is um, when you think that you're being. Uh, I mean, what's the? It's like you're being stalked, but it's not by like someone who has a vendetta against you. It's like an organization that is like sending out different individuals to surveil you. A coordinated group. Perhaps like some kind of gang. It's usually thinking the FBI is following you. You ever have that situation where you're like driving your car and then like a car ends up behind you and then you take a turn and they take a turn and then you take a turn and they take a turn and you're like, okay, I'm still on like a pretty major road. But like if they follow me on this one, then we got problems. And then you take a turn and they don't take a turn and you're like, yeah, I lost them. Even though that motherfucker was just driving home. <laughs> Your ass is like, I'm the greatest driver of all time. Who I shook him. <laughs> By driving exactly to my destination while they drove to their own destination, I managed to lose them. I don't know what the fuck I would do if they lived like three doors down from me. I don't know if either of us are making it. I guess I would just drive home and try to close the garage door real quick. Oh... Pass your house and loop back. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. But I don't know what I'm... Like, what, what am I going to do if they just follow me again? 
has my house again and loop back. We're going to go band for band on the, on the SO. Drive him to the gas station. At some point, you got to get out of your car and be like, hey, kill me. Kill me. Kill me. <clears throat> Motherfucker. It's 136. We're actually we're guaranteed to make negative progress today. All it takes is one bad jump. Have some faith. That's a good point. Oh, sometimes it's just the power of positive thinking. <laughs> Did you see the tweet about kids being their mom's rival from a past life? No, no, I didn't see that one. Kids... Kids being their mom's rival from a past life. Speak, speak on that. I did see some of the videos about the mom who says she doesn't play with her kids. Honestly, like, I've said before, like, you know, probably 95% plus of parents out there are genuinely, like, doing their best. But I do almost think that, like, as soon as you become a parent who posts videos about parenting on TikTok, uh, you should get a visit from... Child Protective Services. That doesn't mean your kids should be taken away. Maybe there's some PhDs out there that are like, here's how I, here's lessons I can teach you from my experience. But they at least need to visit and make sure that everything's okay. Because most parents out there, like I feel like if I was talking to some of my daycare dads, I was like, hey, do you ever get uh, the impetus to like, make a video about like your parenting style I think they would I would be laughed out of the, the group chat honestly they would be like what the fuck are you talking about what am I going to make a video about they ask for an apple I say here's an apple like what <laughs> it's only if the person goes yes that sounds great why I never give my kid an apple when they ask for it. And then they spin out like an eight-part series on that. That's where you have to justify yourself to Child Protective Services a little bit. Oh. Some people are not compatible with their kids because they were rivals in a past life. That's the body of the, of the video? That's crazy, bro. Not compatible with your kid. <laughs> what are you talking about? Imagine having a kid and not rocking with it. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. There's times you're like, you know, I'm like, girl, your vibes are off. Like, why are you so stressed out? You broke a piece of chalk. We got a whole box of chalk that's exactly the same color. Oh, you like that one? You like that, that mass-produced chalk from the Crayola factory? Well, here's another one right next to it. Like, just chill out. But you're also like, ah, whatever, you're three. You'll figure it out. Kid might have bad vibes. I don't know. I, I, I mean, the vibes happen at some point, don't get me wrong. I don't think I've met a three-year-old with bad vibes yet. 
every three-year-old I've, I've met has started initially being shy. And then the parent goes like, hey, show them what you got. And then the kid reaches like into their jacket pocket and pulls out like a fucking rock or an acorn or something like that. And you go, whoa, is that a motherfucking acorn? Holy. And then they go, yeah. And you go, wow, where'd you get that? The ground. The ground? What ground? Mm, the ground outside. I never would have thought of that. Yeah. Huge. Mm, the sediments. <laughs> Can the child understand sarcasm? It's not sarcasm. Sarcasm would be like, what's that? Something useless? Oh, never mind. It's a rock. That's like, you gotta be a fucking sociopath to talk like that to a three year old. Rocks are cool, bro. She was formed by like mineral accretion over a billion years. Oh, fucking the miseries of nature. Mm. Not that interesting to me. <laughs> I'm gonna spend the next 20 minutes here. And that's okay. Your kid voice was on point. All three-year-olds basically sound the same. It's an easy impression. What's crazy is that like, even though they all sound the same, it's so easy to understand my own child speaking and it takes so much effort to understand other, chil other children speaking. But their parents seem to understand it like as well as I understand my child. Which doesn't make sense because I'm like, bro, your kid is like babbling. And you're like, you had too many pieces of cauliflower for dinner? You wish that some of the pieces were broccoli instead? I'm like, how'd you get that? You're like, that's what he said. I'm like, to me, I just got like, wah, 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 wah. Then my kid goes, wah, 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 wah. and you're like, oh, actually, you don't like broccoli or cauliflower. Your favorite vegetables are cucumber and red pepper. And you have a rock. <laughs> Dipped in. <laughs> it is like talking to R2-D2 a little bit. Yeah, you never want to hear your kid go, <laughs> Don't do it. I hate to be this guy about Star Wars. I just wish that Star Wars fans would be consistent, okay? All the point Dexters. Well, if in the eighth episode directed by the heretic Ryan Johnson, uh, crashing a Star Destroyer into another Star Destroyer is something that's allowed within the conventions of modern intergalactic warfare, then why are they even bothering building weapons? Shouldn't they just build starships and then put them at warp speed into other objects on a collision course? Okay, but do R2-D2 next, motherfucker. In the third prequel, that bitch has a flamethrower. And then in A New Hope, he can barely fucking make it across sand. He's, he's tripping over his own shit just trying to get over a sand dune, bro. In the third movie, he's flying! He can fly! Oh!
Also, can I say... You know when Star Wars really... For me, where it jumped the shark? Which is crazy, because it was like... Almost at the end of uh, the second horrible movie they released in a row. As a kid, I loved it. I loved the idea of this, because as a kid, you're not very smart. No disrespect to all the kids out there. You'll get there one day. They never should have had Yoda fight, bro. Does absolutely every single Jedi need to be good with a lightsaber? That shit, like, undermines part of what's interesting about the Force, which is that you can be, like, a powerful wizard in many different disciplines. You don't simply have to be, like, a samurai. But instead, they got this motherfucker, this puppet, doing, like, CGI flips and shit like that, even though he's literally... Like, at 680 years old, that motherfucker was on American Ninja Warrior. And then at age 700, the dude has, like, gray hairs coming out of the scrotum on his forehead. He could, like, barely walk, and he's eating gruel and shit, and <laughs> living in a fucking tree stump in the swamp. Like, what happened? It was, like, 20 years ago, the dude was in the prime of his life, basically. He was... <laughs> You could fall like 300 feet through the air and stuff like that. Like, what happened? Oh, my gosh. Another 10 minutes here. I'm starting to think that maybe, like, the, the vapors of Dagobah is not what you should be breathing in, man. It's like that for humans, too? No, the fuck it isn't, bro. You know, the average human lives to be, like, 80 years old. Nobody's in the peak physical condition at, like, age 65, and then at age 75, they're like, I'm cooked. Yoda literally lived for 690 years or something like that. <laughs> Those years between 690 and 700, they really catch up to you. single years do a lot oh really do you see any 93 year old motherfuckers flipping around 400 feet in the air and then at 94 they can't walk like i don't i'm not saying star wars has to be realistic i'm just saying i it that's why they shouldn't have given him the lightsaber and the fucking parkour and shit to begin with they should have just had him be like an elder statesman Kind of like his his power of the force is like observation and surveillance and governance and facilitation. You know, that way you can ex express that the force manifests his power in different ways. Some people are like really good at using a sword and some people are really good at like fucking being a middle manager on the Jedi Council or something. It makes the multifaceted nature of power in the universe more interesting. Instead, they're like, no, no, Yoda's midichlorian count is actually the highest of any members on the Jedi Council, which means for the movies to be consistent, he has to actually also be the best with the sword. Fucking stupid. Will you be watching Acolyte then? I will not be watching... I don't... They might have lost me forever. I know Andor is good, but you gotta get two in a row before I come back. I didn't watch Obi-Wan. I didn't watch... Asuka. I didn't watch Mandalorian Season 3. I didn't watch Solo. Um, 
I just feel like they kind of, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it's funny to keep talking about Star Wars, I guess, but I really, the, the whole Last Jedi into Rise of Skywalker thing kind of real, for me, it was like, why would I invest time into this uh, media franchise? They don't have anybody at the helm. They don't have anybody at the rudder. It's just people like this character. Let's make a Disney Plus show about this character. And it seems like... the. And don't get me wrong. Marvel is definitely like guilty of this. Oh! <laughs> I feel like the dog jumping in the swimming pool. But like... At least in the in the Marvel heyday, I got the idea that they were like, we're gonna make a decent movie first. And then all the you won't believe who shows up, famous actor in a cameo, all that stuff was like gravy on top of it. Maybe it's not the case anymore, but at least like when, when it was on the ascendancy. The vibe, whether or not it's actually real, that I get from the Star Wars stuff. That's basically from the third sequel through to now, is that, that it's, everything is 100% fan service. Like the brand is exclusively committed to never making the fans upset at all which is just like whether or not it's true is an exceptionally boring central tenant to use as the like driving force for your creative vehicle it's fine but like i don't fucking care it's the old Patton oswald bit right i don't fucking care like who asuka got her kyber crystal for that made her lightsaber like burgundy or whatever just just make it good bro I don't think there's anything wrong with like liking it or watching it. If you're just like, I like when the swords touch. Or it's just like, I'm, I'm out. Me personally, I'm out. And now that I'm out, I found out I can't swim. Know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> Buster! Woo. Wow, that was so much easier. You see Dune 2? Uh, I've been doing 2. I've been doing 2. I haven't yet, but I've been doing 2. No woke geezers bit today? It's not my bit to make! I was thinking about it, though. Minus 2? Minus 2 for what? You don't you didn't like the the woke geezers bit? Who you calling son? I use geez bruv pronouns now. Oh sorry mate, sorry mate. I didn't know, I didn't mean anything by it. It's alright, just don't let it happen again or I'll knock your fucking head in. <laughs> it's it's not stolen, it's referential. It's a reference to a, a great TikTok. What is it? Don't, just don't let it happen again or I'll fucking smash you. Oh. Woo! Oh. 
Hold. Oh, now I got to do the motherfucking wheel, bro. And then after the wheel, you get rewarded with the girder. This is really the blight town of a difficult game about climbing. Just had an hour and a half meeting. My department has three people. Hate to see that. Imagine if you liked your coworkers, though. That would be kind of sick. That would be like a little... Like a little party. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Again. Oh. Hey, can I say something, by the way? Kate and I both agreed on this. When my appetite came back, uh, I picked up my daughter from her class on Sunday and I got everybody McDonald's, okay? Dad of the year, yeah, maybe, maybe dad of the fucking century. Um, I went back on the McDouble and I said, no, I'm gonna go Chicken McNuggets. Now they had a special promotional sauce. I don't know if it's a Canadian thing. It's called Wick Donald's, WC Donald's, uh, something chili sauce. Don't mama liz me, okay? This is important. It's also in America right now. Okay. Yes, the anime sauce. I, um, I got a sweet and sour and a McDonald's chili sauce for myself. I got a sweet and sour and a McDonald's chili sauce for my wife. Reconvened an hour later because I, I got it from the store and then drove it home. Both agreed that sauce is not a winner. That one is not sticking around. It's kind of like a, a, a very, it's a little spicy in a good way, but it's like a, a molasses-y sort of like hoisin chili sauce that I, I didn't really vibe with. I found myself going back to the, to the sweet and the sour. For me personally, it didn't, uh, it didn't hit the note. But I, I honestly, why aren't they releasing like a promotional McNugget sauce like six times a year? Isn't it just like corn syrup and flavored salt? Like they should always have like a like a special one on the menu, man. Because they're out of ideas. Q. Well, like, listen, are they out of ideas? I'm not saying you gotta hand it to them, but like, don't 99% of the people that go to the store go to the store for familiarity, not novelty? I guess they're not really rewarded for sending out like new ideas. Anytime I see an ad for it's like, we've introduced a kickin' chicken ranch feaster. I'm like, wow, that looks great. Would you like one? I think I'll take ch 10 chicken McNuggets, personally. Yeah. And so, <laughs> until someone makes a lizier oil. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. huge. Because investors want the line to go up. Yeah, 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 but you don't innovate by making new products anymore. McDonald's is already mature. Instead, you just, you know, pay your chicken producers like 1% less a year. And you're like, holy cow, look at that. Our EBITDA went up 1%.
Help me. Help me. If the chicken producers let him do it, why not? That's the spirit, the El Guiga. <laughs> That's the speed. Does your boss know you watch this stream? Do you have permission to speak freely? Absolutely not. That would be crazy. I don't think you could get fired for watching this. Like, I think that's like an ACLU thing. But you telling your boss that you watch this might definitely factor into like their assessment of your character which could limit your career growth at that organization yeah. or maybe they'd be like that's awesome we watch him too but like let's be serious yeah. okay i at least i know it's 202 cape i don't know if you're still here i have to get past the girder because if this is the first thing that I've got to do next time I play this game. Like, it's never getting finished. Come on, I want to watch Persona. Yo, how good is the music in Persona? It's insanely good. That was not... I, I went too early. <clears throat> slow your roll slow your roll now go back 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 I can't I literally can't talk about anything else I wanted to talk about how like is there what's the genre of music in Persona where it's like um, the RJD2 beats in the background and then like a man with a voice like a muted saxophone pops out and like reads his grocery list to you and like instead of it being pure ass you're like this is the greatest music that's ever been written it's jazz yeah but it's like it's like rap jazz though What the fuck was that, bro? Because in jazz, if it has a singer, usually, you know, it's got Kim Cattrall in the background going like, a boop, skiddy, beep, 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 a skibbity, boo. But then, like, the, the persona rap is always like, um,. I don't know how to describe it. It's like it's like if the poke rap was good. Like the dude is just like at the the hardest beat you've ever heard, and then a guy comes in and he's like, "Bass, I'm frying bananas. I'm flying a kite. I'm seeing bananas." And you're like, this is the song you play while you're going to the bathroom in Persona. Treble! I'm a downright rebel! You wouldn't believe what I do in Bevel! Like, it's... I don't know what it is, but I want... I want more of it. It's like... Public Enemy playing like a kid's birthday party, but the vibe sort of works. I give it my fucking all, bro.
<laughs> an insane obstacle. Bro, this is how my grandpa used to get to work. Show some respect, okay? He did work at the bottom left factory. Thank you for asking. Who's up beam both ways? <laughs> oh, okay. Go. Oh! Uh, well, you know what? Timing. At least we're not stuck at the girder. 